Hello, my name is David Garski, and I'm a software engineer at Wolf SSL. Today, we're going to be talking about Wolf Boot with the STM32. This is a multi part video series, starting with an overview of Wolf SSL and the Wolf Boot library. Wolf SSL was founded in 2004 with the need at MySQL for a SSL library that matched the licensing, which is GPL. As a result of that, our our co-founders, Todd and Larry, decided to write this. Uh, it was called Yazzle in C++. And in 2006, they wrote an embedded C version of it called C Yazzle. In 2014, we changed the name to Wolf SSL. And that's what you see today. We have over 1,000 OEM customers and 17 resale partners. And at any one point in time, we're securing over 2 billion connections because of the products that we're in. ST is a really great partner of ours and I'm really proud today to present this video series about Wolf Boot in conjunction with them. These are our Wolf SSL products. The Wolf SSL library itself is a TLS, uh, it's a TLS library that provides uh, client server functionality for all the latest standards. It's built upon our Wolf Crypt library, which is a FIPS 140-2, 140-3 certified crypto engine. It's also uh, certified for aeronautics use with a DO-178C certifications. We have a Wolf MQTT client library for cloud broker connections. We have an SSH client and server, also supports SCP and SFTP. Our Wolf TPM library is based on the TCG's 2.0 specification and allows use of crypto chips like the ST33 TPM. And today we'll talk about Wolf Boot, our secure bootloader. Uh, it can also support major boot when used in conjunction with Wolf TPM. We also have wrappers for Java, C Sharp, Python, and we have some other tools like command line utilities. Something that's not mentioned here is we also have a TLS 1.3 sniffer, which uses the, which supports a key manager. And there's also an intrusion detection prevention system called Wolf Sentry that's being released. So Wolf Boot is a generic secure boot solution. It runs on virtually any microcontroller. Um, it is designed to run in bare metal and it's very easy to port additional platforms with our hardware abstraction APIs. There's no dynamic memory used, so it's all static or stack based. And we've also designed it to be the code to be safe so that it's used for aeros can be used for aerospace, medical, and automotive. The Wolf Boot library is based on the IETF suite draft, which is a firmware update architecture for internet things. And it defines things like um, that the actual swapping of partitions should happen in the bootloader, and there should be mechanisms to roll back on failures, things like that, which you fully support. We also have examples available in our Wolf Boot examples repository. And we have key generation and signing tools that have been written in Python and C. So the, the firmware partition image can be hashed and signed using these algorithms. These are very common asymmetric key algorithms where you have a public private key. Public key is a root of trust that's embedded into the bootloader and the private key is what's used to sign the image. We also support encryption of the partitions using ChaCha Poly. Additionally, you can offload uh, the verification of these images to secure elements like the STSafe A110 or the ST33 TPM. You can also use those to pin the root of trust, that public key that's trusted for the, the signed firmware. WolfCrypt is what's used for the verification underneath, and we support assembly optimizations that are incredibly fast for these platforms. So our, our partition scheme is very flexible and it's determined at build time. The bootloader usually takes 10 to 30 kilobytes. There's one sector, one flash sector that's reserved for a swap. And then the remainder is split between application and update partitions. The, mech, the, the, the firmware update mechanism, it will prevent a uh, fallback to a previous version. So, well, let me, let me clarify. So if let's say somebody tried to install an older version, it will prevent that. If the update fails, so if you send down an update and it 
fails to boot the application successfully, on the next reboot, it'll actually roll back. Additionally, it's power fail safe. So during the swapping of the partitions, if there's a power failure on resumption of power, the process will pick up exactly where it left off. And there'll be no lost data. Some platforms support hardware assisted, assisted bank swapping. And if that's available, we leverage it. We support external spy flash memory for the update partition and the swap sector. And it's important to note that the update mechanism where the, the transport mechanism that the, the OTA image comes down is actually in your application, it's not in the bootloader. So this is a list of supported STM32 microcontrollers with Wolf Boot that have currently been ported and are supported. It's the SM32 G0, L0, L5, WB, F4, F7, and H7. There are more being added all the time, and we're happy to help port support or port these for you. Here's a comparison of Wolf Boot with ST's SBSFU and ARM's trusted firmware TFM. Wolf Boot is highly optimized with the memory footprint and processing time. It's also based on proprietary and efficient HAL interfaces. And it uses our WolfCrypt optimized cryptographic engine, which is FIPS validated. It also supports all the STPKA, which is the ECC hardware acceleration. The SBSFU and TFM, they offer a full coverage of the STM32 families, um, demonstrate how to combine STM32 features and reach a highest level of security. It has TFM secure services framework for Trust Zone and the system level certification on select micros. So next I'm gonna show you a comparison slide of the three. And so the code base for Wolf Boot is proprietary, but it's open source GPL v2. Um, I believe you can get the source code for the other ones as well. In Wolf Boot, you have the ability to do two partitions or, or it's required for the update procedure. The other ones you can do one or two. With Wolfboot, you can sign with ED25519 or ECC or RSA. And you also support encryption of the partition using ChaCha Poly, and, and soon we'll add AES GCM as well. Uh, let's see. Obviously, ours uses WolfCrypt underneath, uh, which is a you know certified, very robust WolfCrypt library. There's secure element support for things like the ST Safe or the ST33. And it's also possible to support external flash. Our Wolf Boot is fully make file based, uh, while the others have some examples for EWRM, Kyle, and STM32 Cube IDE. So we're going to dive a little bit into the Wolf Boot implementation details. So these are the software components. Your application sits here. It can be on an RTOS or not. There are two APIs that the library can. Uh, that your application can call into Wolf Boot from your application side. So you can call an API that says, uh, perform an update on the next reboot. You can also call an API that says, I successfully booted my application, do not roll back on the next reboot. So those are important. And the state of those is maintained in the flash, which I'll show you later. So there's only a couple of public APIs in the sense from the application, the rest is all internal. In the Wolf Boot library, there's a root of trust, which is that public key that is specific to you that can be pinned into the firm the firmware for the bootloader. And that's what's used for the verification of the partitions. You, we do support multiple keys and we support offloading it to other hardware if, if the platform supports it. And then our FIPS certified WolfCrypt engine is over here. And important to note that WolfCrypt itself supports all the secure elements like the SD safe, and it's what's responsible for uh, handling that. So these are the, uh, the HAL APIs for a new platform. The most important are the flash, erase, and write functions. The init, usually what we do is we'll speed up the clock to the fastest so you can have the, the quickest boot time. Uh, if you're using external spy flash, you'll need a spy driver ported as well. This is an example for partitioning of an STM32F4. This one's a little unusual and they're all a little different uh, depending on the sector size. This one happens to have large sectors of 128 KB. And you can see in this example how we partitioned it. Um, Wolf Boot sits in the, the first few small sectors, usually with you know less than 32K. And then there's a primary 
partition, an update partition, and a swapping partition. This shows you where, uh, you know, an upgrade from a version one to a version two and how it swaps. Uh, the state of the update uh, process is stored in the last, the end of the last sector of the update partition, because usually there's free space there, hopefully. And uh, this swap sector is what makes sure we can do it in a power fail safe way. And with our support for external spy flash memory, there's a couple more HALs APIs, as I mentioned, and the firmware update partition and the swap space can be offloaded to the external spy flash, giving you more onboard flash space available for your application. This slide covers a few useful resources. Uh, one is a Git, GitHub link to our Wolf Boot repository, and another is the examples repository. This is a link to the IETF suite draft standard. There are also a couple of useful YouTube videos that have been posted. And I'll go over this in the next video where the documentation is, but it's in the Wolfboot docs directory in Markdown format. So if you have any questions about Wolfboot or are interested in adding any additional uh, platforms, you can email us at fax at wolfssl.com. And thank you for your time. And I look forward to presenting the next video for you.